Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2022 film Dark Glasses. It's a Dario Argento film, it's a giallo, and it's coming to Shudder on Thursday, October 13th. It's being said to be a Shudder original. So this is a no-spoiler review just because it's a newer film and it's not even on Shudder when I'm putting this review up, so yeah. I wish I could tell you that I really love this film. I wanted to love it because it's Argento putting out a new film. I am glad to have seen it just because it's a new Argento film. And if you've ever liked Argento, it's just cool to get another film from this individual. That said, it didn't feel like that much of a giallo film, to be honest. I mean, it is a giallo film and it has like the main trappings of it. Like, you know, Black Glove Killer, there's fumbling police, um, there's a woman in distress, uh, there's a sexuality to it element, you know, those types of things. Didn't really see them throwing in a whole lot of red herrings, though. Like, there weren't any things they were very strongly going at it, but I don't know, it just didn't have the spirit that I wanted it to, unfortunately. Now, maybe I, my, you know, bar's just set too high because I've seen a lot of really good Giallo films, but I don't know. Um, I know there are people who are going to watch this film and they're really going to enjoy it, and that's great. I really hope that this finds its fan base, and I'm sure it will. It's just for me, wasn't a big fan. But I'll tell you, with no spoilers, um, the good and the bad of this. Directed by Dario Argento, whose last film was in 2012, and it was Dracula 3D. So once again, you know, 10 years later, it's really cool to see him just put something out. Written by Argento, as well as Franco Farini, who also wrote scripts for Red Rings of Fear, Phenomena, Demons, Demons 2, Sweets from a Stranger, Opera, Two Evil Eyes, Trauma, The Stendhal Syndrome, Sleepless, The Card Player, Eyes of Crystal, and Do You Like Hitchcock, just to name some. Uh, this film is in Italian language, so it is English subtitles. I kind of wish they would have gone, like, super old school with it and, like, dubbed it in English to make it have even more of that, like, giallo feel. But like I said, it doesn't really feel... I don't know, there's not enough giallo-ness to it. One of the things I was really missing in this was quirky characters. You know how giallo films a lot of the times have these really, like, weird kind of quirky characters and, like, weird situations? Um, I was missing a lot of that, I think, but maybe I was just looking for too much of a throwback, and Argento was really trying to do just, like, an update for Giallo for 2022. I mean, that's possible. It just wasn't what I wanted. Synopsis-wise, uh, it is a bat. it's a Giallo, so you can figure out, you know, Black Love Killer, um, trying to figure out who that is. Uh, it's about a woman who is a sex worker who ends up getting into a car accident after she's being chased by the killer, and she loses her vision. So dark glasses has to do with the fact that she has to wear dark glasses after her accident. Um, it's kind of explained that, like, she could get her sight back. So there is that. But, um, and it does come into play. Like, her actually losing her sight does actually come into play. Not just from the standpoint of, like, making her seem even more vulnerable. Although that is what that does. So it does have kind of an impact from that standpoint. But it ends up mattering in the end, um, and you'll see what I mean if you watch the film. But that's all I want to give as far as synopsis. It's a giallo film. Just understand that. Great music. Great music during the opening credits. That song during the opening credits got me pumped. Unfortunately, the rest of the film did not. Uh, the music in this was done by Arnaud Rebettini. So good job, Arnaud. The music was probably the best thing about this film, in my opinion, other than some of the gore. There were a few good kills, two good kills in this. Otherwise, there were some other kills, and they were terrible. They were so lame. They lacked brutality. They lacked gore. They were really kind of quick and very whatever. It seemed like just disinterest, you know? Like, it was just like, oh, yeah, then we just need to kill someone real quick. So just, like, you know, up the body count, but not in, like, an interesting, meaningful way. Like, I don't know. But... You got two good kills, so I was happy about that. But yes, the music was wonderful. It doesn't take long to get into the first kill, and it's actually a much longer scene than you think it's going to be, and it is very gory. That is the best kill, the best kill in the film. It is really good, and I love that. That probably, yes, actually, my favorite part of the film. That moment <laughs> is my favorite part of the film, other than the music. The music is, is pretty great, but... I mean, it's no Goblin, 
but it's pretty great. Uh, but yeah, get ready for that first kill scene. Feels like Giallo, Black Glove Killer and all, immediately they get into that kind of Giallo realm. It does feel a little bit odd, a little bit off, but that's kind of, you know, Giallo was like that. So it does have a little bit of that Giallo feel that way. There's a real well-done car chase scene that eventually ends up with the crash. That's how, you know, the scene that ends up getting to the dark glasses aspect of the film. But, um... Yeah, it was shot really well. I was actually really impressed with how they did that car chase, chase and crash scene. It looked really, really good. And, you know, speaking of looks, like, it's Argento. You know, like, it. he's a very well-established director, so it's not going to look bad. It's directed well. It has good cinematography. Unfortunately, I wanted there to be more flair. I wanted that old-school Argento flair. I wanted it to go back to something like a Suspiria a Tenebre, a Deep Red, you know, even Cat and Nine Tails, something like that. And I just wanted to see, like, interesting camera angles, interestingly framed shots, using architecture, because that's something that he did a lot. Didn't really do that a lot in this film. Um, colors, that's another thing. I was hoping that there would be a lot of interesting colors, but I guess, you know, as the his career had gone on. He kind of got away from that, unfortunately. But I was just hoping, since this was a return to Giallo, that we would get some of those older Giallo aspects to it. Maybe I was asking for too much. I guess I was. There's a len lengthy sequence getting the main character acquainted with visual aids and strategies after she's lost her vision. Uh, this serves to set expectations for what the character can and cannot do at this point. So it's effective for that standpoint, but like... Almost every single scene in the film, it goes on too long. Well, not almost every single scene. There are a lot of scenes that just go on too long, and you're kind of like, for what purpose? Why are we still doing this? And the film, I'm just going to say it now, the film's pacing sucks. It is terrible pacing. It's an hour and 25 minutes with credits, so it should feel like it moves relatively quick. It doesn't. It feels like it is much longer than an hour and 25 minutes, unfortunately. Because they don't fill the time with anything all that engaging. Like I said, like, where are the quirky characters? Where are the weird situations? Like, where's all that stuff? The other big thing that's really missing from this that I can't believe it's missing is the investigative aspect of it. Like, almost all Giallo films, the good ones, the interesting ones, the engaging ones, have this level of investigation that's going on. Whether it's one of the main characters getting involved in doing the investigating themselves or if it's following the police to some degree, that's kind of not even here. And I don't understand the choice to not really put it in. Like, that's what drives interest. That's what keeps people engaged. Leaving those little breadcrumbs to kind of get people thinking like, oh, maybe it's this person. Oh, maybe it's this person. Like, they didn't really even introduce, like, red herring stuff at all. And the other thing is, they they have this moment where they're like, they do the reveal of who the killer is. And it's just like, it's way too soon. In my opinion, I was like, okay, well this clearly can't be it, but it is, it just feels lazy in my opinion. As far as the Giallo goes, it's lazy. Like I'm just not, not feeling it. If you can't tell, but like I said, hopefully other people like it. <laughs> um, plenty of character interactions feel off. That's another thing. The dialogue's not great. Now, that said, there could be kind of like some lost in translation stuff since I'm, you know, reading English subtitles and it's in Italian. But the interactions just feel off. They feel weird, not in a fun way. Like, they're very unrealistic. Um, and there's also this really odd relationship that gets established within the film between two characters that is very unrealistic, and you're just kind of like, oh, they just, yep, they just forced that together, didn't they? A lot of writing out of convenience, which, there was a lot of that in Giallo scripts, I understand. Like, there was a lot of writing out of convenience, but they made it interesting, they made it weird, they made it quirky in an engaging way. This one doesn't, it just does it in a boring way, in my opinion. The second and third kill are super lame. Uh, especially with how stupid the victims are. That's the other thing. It's like, come on. I feel like your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete would have a field day with this film for his Nails in the Coffin uh, video. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, one nail for every single one of these people. It's like, well, not everyone, but 
a lot of them. It's just, but it, it's it's tough because the first kill being so good, then they have all these other kills that are so lame in comparison. And it's not even like the first one was so good that it makes the other one seem lame, even though they're good. It's literally that they're just lame. Like, they're bad. They're, like, whatever. Like, it seems like they were literally just like, we just need to do this. Like, just, just let's move on. We're done with it. But then they don't even move on to anything all that interesting. It's just like, let's move on to people walking around, not figuring anything out. Certainly not investigating anything. It's more about the woman being pursued than it is about anyone trying to figure out who the killer is. And I feel like it should have been about that. That would have been way more engaging. There's a reveal in the film with plenty more time to go, which made me think that it wasn't going to be the real reveal, but unfortunately it is the real reveal, and I'm like, what the hell? Lazy. Uh, the killer's motivation is ridiculous. Now, I understand there were plenty of Giallo films where the killer's motivation was ridiculous, but this one's just not even interesting. Like, at least there are Giallo films where... The motivation's ridiculous, but it's interesting. It's kind of weird, quirky, funny. Not the case for this one. You're just kind of like, oh, oh, okay. Some solidly fun gore at the end of the film, but mostly the events at the end are very lame. Like, it, the film really just, like, at the end. Like, when they, they start to, like, build some stuff up, and then you get to a point where you're like, okay, maybe we're going to see something interesting, something cool. You see the cool gore, and then you're just like, oh, okay, now we're done? Okay, it just ends with a whimper. <sighs> where's the art, where's the flair? I needed that from Argento. The pacing, oh my gosh, the pacing. Oh my gosh, the pacing, so terrible. Um, and missing that investigative aspect to it, like I just... I can't. So, I mean, there's a... It's not a terrible film, but it really didn't even come close to, like, my any lowered expectations I had, honestly. So, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm it's a one and a half star film. It really is. Like I said, like, it looks good. The music's really good. The performances are good. It's just... The script's not there. It doesn't feel that inspired, other than a few moments here and there. I mean, it's a film, you know, it's a Giallo film. So I'm just going to go back to watching the old Giallo films that I have a bunch of in here um, and on Giallo Realm on YouTube. So, yeah, uh, which I will be doing some more reviews. I'm, I, I'm planning on maybe picking that up a little bit more, maybe in November, maybe even just devote November to doing some more of that, to be honest. But go ahead and put your comments down here, especially if you've seen Dark Glasses and you want to talk about that. You can do spoilers in the comments. That's fine. Go ahead. Uh, do me a quick favor. Hit the subscribe button to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. It is quick, painless, costs you nothing, and I really appreciate it. It keeps me motivated to keep pumping out these videos. Also, if you can hit the notification bell button, that would be awesome. Then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for taking your time to watch this particular video. I appreciate it very much. And until next time, keep it brutal.